It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Nima Akalaju. <laughs> Nima Akashazibi, how are you doing? So, you are doing the naming for me for a week. Yeah. It's all right. So, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm good. I'm very be tired, overworked, but it's fine. Good. I'm grateful to God for life, for family. How is the new office doing? Fine. There was a small drama in my daughter's school. A senior that's supposed to be her mentor thinks it's okay to sometimes correct her with the... It's spanking. So I put I up with it slap because... How many, how many years senior are we talking about? Is it slap? She's a final year. My daughter is in fi uh, first, first year. year okay. And so they're like school mentor. Yeah, they yeah. were linked together. She's a scholar. She's a very brilliant, very promising young girl. But usually they just get the smack, smack, smack. Yeah. And so this final one, I was like, smack no, I had no born child that you it's should be smacking yeah. around. Yeah. And the poor girl felt, yeah, she, I said she's, been, she's been withdrawn into yeah, herself. Yeah. But you know, there's a way I talk when I'm upset. You think I want to kill somebody. <laughs> Actually, it might be, it, it varies the emotions. The voice is just the same. So <laughs> I, I, I'd like to, I spoke to my daughter yesterday. I'll speak to the girl today. To but I don't want, I've told the school, I no longer want her to have the right to do to that to yeah. my yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really buried because if I now release that one now, the school might not be able to handle her own side of the. Uh, yeah. So we can't have two people fighting in school. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Good, good. How are you doing? Smart woman. <laughs> I'm fine. I was just saying that uh, it hasn't been too long since we spent for Christmas and everything. Went to the stores yesterday. These commercial sellers, they have started bringing uh, Valentine's. Valentine's things out again. I say, what? Yeah. Allow us <laughs> to save us. our money. <laughs> Let us breathe, please, <laughs> people. What is it? it Red great. everywhere. <laughs> and everything is looking inviting. I'm like, okay, I'm sad. Please, enough. Let us it's rest. Psychology. <laughs> I'm getting really Everybody's <laughs> resting, though. We have to make our money back. You know, I, I love this outfit. Too. I'm not too confused. How are you doing? Okay. Marianne, that's, that's, all, that's all your banter for today. Yes, please <laughs> allow our money to rest. Please no, stop, rest. stop distracting us. We are learning sales. This is also BC. No, no, this is a TBC. Uh, TBC. Yeah. Oh, this is lovely. What, TBC wardrobe. wardrobe. Yeah. Ah, thank lovely. You. Thank how you. Doing? So I'm looking at um, trying to figure out a date for sales because uh, I, I am hand. broke. Valentine's sales. Exactly. Valentine's sales early of the year. Valentine's sales. We are broke. We oh, have shop. You know, business people don't usually have money. As the money is coming in, you're buying more products. Yeah. So now I've shopped for products. I need to sell them. I'm broke. So I'm trying to figure out with my team a date that we can start posting and getting ready for people to come and buy. Please come and buy. Eh? Well, Spend your money. Is your your life. My focus. You, you are alive to be able to chop your money. So chop your money. Don't That's keep it. Good. Good. Don't keep it. Yeah. I'm going to um, Lacoa today. A bit of a distance. I'm yes, really what's happening there? I'm speaking there um, uh, for an event. I'll be speaking. I'm one of the speakers today. It's supposed to start, I think, 2 or 1 o'clock. So I'll okay. be leaving right after the show. Yeah. Okay. So it's a long distance. What's the traffic like these days? I, I don't, I'm not an island so person. Long. I hardly go to the island, so I don't really know. But I just know that that road, yeah, I dread it. I've never been to that. I've not been to that since I left it's, Pan Atlantic. I went, there, I went to a client's house over, I think, the holiday. Yeah. Between the holiday because she was around. And I was shocked at the development that, you know, that... Okay, they, they fixed the roads. Concrete roads. Ah. It's wide enough. Oh, nice. I was like, ah. But and me, to I used to have... still working on it, it too. No, I think it's... What about until where LBS I, you is? You know, I don't know... After Aja. Before the LBS. No, no, no. Oh, no. no. Lako is after LBS. After, after. Way, yeah, yeah. Yeah, after. 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 So before. Yes. Okay. Before, okay. before. before. Yes, the roads have been done. Okay. I went to Awoya, yeah. After and I was I was really well, shocked. Year. The roads have been I think all the way to Ekbel. No, they've been working on no, it. There's, there's, there's a road. road. They're, they're still working on it. Done. They're, they're not they're done making yet. A, I think they're making. That's why we went to boarding house in the first place because we couldn't deal with the traffic. They're ah, still working. I didn't believe what I saw because yeah. okay, well, to when I went. I'm going there today. I'll see. I'll see. I'll give you feedback. All right. Let's. are doing the train. We haven't. Oh, that's true. I have done the train. Sorry, I haven't done the train either. Without us. No, the glory. Yeah, yes. officially. No, 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 no. Official, that officially. Like, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Normally, I don't do train. Yeah, but we need no, to do no, the like, no, to, just for. To the... Yeah, I think you mentioned. Because I saw it. my carry card yesterday when I was going to. I'm like, yeah. no, use it. Get yeah, on the train. Well, well, let's go on a break. It's <laughs> Wednesday. When we come back, we continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Okay, we're going to start with the nation. President raises red alert over rising banditry and kidnapping. Picture story here. Buhari, why I didn't fire a Mayfili. Declare me Nasara governor. PDP candidate Ombugadu tells Supreme Court. APC adopts direct primary in Edo as party chairman joins race. Torrents of tribute for Bisi Akande at 85 birthday. Many feared killed, houses destroyed in Ibadan explosion. EFCC quizzes AGF in the humanitarian ministry probe. Okay, which story? Okay, so I have the Ibadan story. Um, as I yesterday, I think this paper reported, but they have on their online news, that nation, a present update. So yesterday, many were fed dead when the explosion happened at 7.44 p.m. in Ibadan, and they couldn't ascertain what the cause of it was. The special advisor to the governor on security, former commissioner of Lagos, um, uh, former commissioner of police in Lagos, Mr. Fata Oshini, was there, and they were already trying to get people to hospital, injured people to hospital, as at yesterday's report. But online today, the governor has confirmed that illegal miners operating in the states were responsible for the explosion. So they had, you know, piled up explosives that they used in their illegal mining in somewhere in Bodija, and that was the cause of the explosion. 77 people injured, two confirmed dead, and um, houses collapsed. About four houses collapsed that were, you know, bordering around where the duplex where the explosives were stored, mm -hmm. and um, four other uh, houses badly uh, damaged. Several mm -hmm. around the city um, area in Bodija as well damaged business places and all of that Incarns. damaged. It brings us back to the conversation of um, you know the restructuring and federalism and who should be in charge of the resources of the state because now governor is going there to confirm that it, but who but who, who, who got really licensed he's saying he's suspected so where the mm -hmm. investigation so are probably still ongoing the story is that mm -hmm. they have the, at the scene of the explosion they have confirmed that you know explosives caused this explosion and mining is not something that is the prerogative of state governments mm -hmm. sadly it is a federal mm -hmm. exclusive matter so Should whether the people are illegally mining or they have licenses is a different matter. Okay, let's take another story in Nation. Yes, um, taking the major headline. So uh, you said yesterday there was a raft of security meetings uh, following the spike in kidnapping and banditry in the last few weeks. The president summoned the service chiefs to an emergency meeting in Abuja. Um, we also heard that the FCT minister met with heads of security agencies as well as chairman of six area councils. The inspector general of police also met with force management team and tactical squad. Um, so the, they said that uh, the meeting at the villa, there was no official statement about it. But, uh, but the general, in summary, is just saying that the president has given the security chiefs marching orders. You know, um, they said in different forums where he was yesterday, he explained that this is something that he's um, that we need to that he's working seriously on. It's important. Um, he also met with uh, a delegation from Jamaya to Nasruddin. So this is an Islamic movement, uh, and he came to the house, state house in Abuja, and. Um, According to the statement by his, his, the special advisor on media and publicity, the president said security agencies were addressing security challenges. And then he says there's no weapon against poverty that is as potent as learning. So in summary, he talked about, you know, pushing for education, you know, we'll fight um, insecurity as well as making sure that our children are properly educated. Uh, we, we are dedicated to building a last, lasting peace with focus on comprehensive education of our children. We will get our teachers and their own and their owners involved in education process that will be relevant to the future of this country. Mm. He says knowledge brought him where he is, and then with prayers and support. Uh, without knowledge, there's nothing to generate hope for mankind. Right. So he's saying that this war, apart from you know, with arms and ammunition, also the youth need to be educated. It's another form of fighting the war. Which hey. I agree. Yeah. So I have a human interest story in the papers. Uh, four students and three other passengers yesterday lost their lives after a commercial bus rammed into a motorcycle and tricycle in Oshun State. Uh, the accident, according to the Federal Road Safety Commission, FRSC, occurred around 9, 10 a.m. around Wadif area.
close to Lameko Junction on Ring Road Bypass. And the Oshun State Sector Commander of the FRSC, Mr. Henry Benamasia, was the one who you know, talked about this. I said the accident involved a blue Mazda commercial bus and a tricycle. And the accident involved eight persons comprising of four male adults and four children. And only one of the passengers survived. He also said the, uh, four persons died on the spot and three others <coughs> passed on in the hospital. The passengers later died at the Oshun Teaching Hospital where they were rushed to and only one survivor out of the eight uh, persons involved in the accident. So he said, you know, blaming the accident on excessive speed leading to bust of tire and loss of control that we must be very careful as we ply on the roads. Okay, so the ongoing investigation of alleged fraud in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation <laughs> yesterday um, took a different turn as the Attorney General of the Federation was also invited by EFCC. Um, that's Mrs. <clears throat> Maedin, that's Ulua Toin Maedin. She was um, asked to clarify allegations also on the withdrawal of th 3 billion naira from the COVID-19 dedicated account uh, for some projects in the same ministry. Um, she was asked to provide documents to even show the modus operandi of, of, of approving budget to be transferred to private accounts. Uh, according to her, they asked her to explain details on all the various procedures to request for disbursement of funds from the ministry to, um, to private accounts. <coughs> she also asked to make relevant letters and circulars available to the investigators uh, as got, as got the documentations and the process generally in, 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 within the ministry. Okay, moving on now to the punch. Uh, abduction, epidemic, anti-corruption, anti Kidnapping protest holds in Abuja today as 10 suspects arrested. FG saves 8 trillion naira from subsidy removal uh, forex reform, says Tinubu's panel. Refinery Dangote investors gain 1.2 trillion naira. Naira plunges to 1,300 naira to the dollar at parallel market. Picture story here, many fear dead as massive explosion rocks the badon. Okay, which story in punch? Just a very short one. So following the announcement of um, re, you know, refining and commencement of production of diesel and aviation fuel by the Dangote refinery, the punch reports that its investors in the stock of the um, equity investors in the stock of companies under the Dangote group have gained 1.2 trillion during the two trading sessions of this week alone. And some of the subsidiary companies are Dangote, um, cement, Dangote, the sug um, sugar refinery, Nascon Allied Industries, mm -hmm. and several other. And so they've seen a spike, of course, in the um, in their stock. Okay, uh, let's see one more story before we go. In. Let me think. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing the papers. Uh, yes, punch. The yeah. Members of the Middle Belt Forum will today, Wednesday, in Abuja, protest the rising cases of kidnapping in the region and insecurity that has you know, ravaged parts of the country. This is also coming against the backdrop of the arrest of 10 suspected bandits by the military. And the president of the forum, Brent Kane, I was the one who said the protesters will march peacefully to the Attorney General of the Federation's office to demand the declaration of the kidnappers and bandits as terrorists and an end to the killings and abductions across the country. And, you know, they said uh, the recent abduction that happened had about 19 abductees that were taken away by bandits from the Sagwari estate layout in Dusen al Haji area, in Wari uh, Area Council of um, Abuja. And um, they said last Thursday, they spent, um, the abductees have spent seven days in the custody of their captors already. And the kidnappers are demanding 700 million naira ransom for nine of the victims. We already know that some of the victims have been killed. And I would like to mention the name. 
They had killed four of the hostages, including Nabiha al Kadria, a 400 level student of biology science, Amadu Bello University, Zaria, and 13 year old for Lashade Ario. You know, and we also explained how the cap, um, abduction had happened. We already know the story. But they said the primary objective of this peace work organized by Africa's Morning Center for Public Policy and Good Governance and Middle Belt Youth Forum is to compel the federal government through the Attorney General of the Federation to invoke Sections 3, 48 and 49 of Nigeria's Terrorism Prevention and Prohibition Act of 2022 so that they can declare these wanton killings and destruction mm. an act of terrorism, saying that there's no way this is not terrorism. It beats all the things that are in the Constitution, and it's so organized, so structured, that it must be proscribed as you know, terrorism. And so they are asking the Attorney General of the Federation to do the needful, and that's one of the reasons they are going so to I, be... I reached out to a relative okay. um, in Abuja who lives in that area, very close to the area, and just out of fear of what might be. And he says that it's, it's less policing that they're suffering for. Mm. You know, the state is being, maybe Wiki doesn't understand that the FCT is a state that needs its own internal organization. So, for instance, Lagos State had neighborhood watch. Mm. In some states, you have some of Amotek. You will drive to some areas of Abuja and it will be dark and lonely. Mm. Somewhere, so imagine security. that within Asokoro, you have some lonely roads that if you get there, you will not see any sight but Okadas. You should not be, everywhere should be manned. It's the FCT for yeah. God's sake. Mm. Yeah. We have to move on to another story. Let me take um, the chairman of the presidential Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms Committee, Mr. Taiwo Oyedele, has said that we should be saving about 8 trillion naira annually, uh, taking from the private sector to government as a result of the removal of the fuel subsidy. He was speaking yesterday at LCC, yeah, that's the Lagos Chamber of Commerce Industry, in 20, uh, uh, at an event yesterday. He said it's, it's very critical for government to spend the monies saved properly so that Nigerians can actually see the results of the... Um, the the, the removal of the subsidy. So the sacrifices Nigerians have made, they've made quite a bit of sacrifices, and this eight trillion naira that they're about to save, that they're saving per year, should be judiciously, judiciously utilized. Furthermore, he said that Nigeria has the capacity to make about $20 billion from technology, uh, from, the tech, from the tech sector, and we all need to be to harness and see what we can do to create digital opportunities for young people uh, and, uh, and just drive capacity and in technology area. So see how that works. Moving on quickly now to Daily Sun. Nigeria's stolen assets, UK court orders return of 8.2 billion naira. Disgruntled politicians using IPOP against deputy speaker, says group. Um, why the Sun Awards winner emerged? Concerns mount over sale of $2.4 billion shell onshore gas assets. Residents panic as the explosion rocks the battle. And anxiety as Supreme Court reserves judgment on the Nasara and Kebi Guba disputes. Okay. Um, so global oil giant Shell operating in Nigeria's SPDC yesterday announced the sale of its $1.2 billion onshore oil fields and gas assets to Renaissance, a consortium of five companies. So these five Nigerian companies have footprints in oil exploration and production. That's ND Western, Aradel Energy, First ENP, Walter Smith and Petrolin. Uh, so they said the deal had been in the pipeline for some years now, uh, but it's also subject to approval by the federal government. And so, and then there are also other conditions to be met before this goes ahead. But if this is approved by the federal government, they say this transaction would fulfill Shell's long-term goal of removing itself from a challenging operating environment in the Niger Delta region, while its flag remains hoisted in the offshore and deep offshore. Um, so. Uh, the paper said that they had, you know, uh, they were in conversation with Professor Adjola Adenikinju. He is a former director, Center for Petroleum, Energy and Economics and Law. So he gave his own, you know, his thoughts about this. He said that this development sends a wrong signal to the international community and potential investors. The federal government had, has perennially failed to address the twin monster of oil theft and pipe vandalism. It says Shell has constantly lamented, um, you know, that crude oil theft was a serious threat to Nigeria, um, you know, and we've also heard Tony and Lumelu talk about this as well, you know, for those of them in this business, they say one of the biggest 
threat to that business is the oil theft that keeps happening. And so for them, it's a, it seems, you know, we're telling the international market that it's a hostile environment to do this sort of business. So it's like a warning to the federal government to get its act together in that area of vandalism okay, and so oil theft. I have the um, return money. So uh, following the forfeiture order by a court in the United Kingdom, the sum of the way some carry ammo. Son, you said <laughs> six point nine euros, uh, six point nine million euros, or eight point nine million dollars, or eight point two billion naira, when converted to naira, might be on its way back to us. So they said this money was suspected to have been stolen for a mark for arm purchase in the Jonathan administration, and the court has ruled a forfeiture <clears throat> and refund to us. So we are okay. Money is coming small, small. So a group, Peace in Southeast Project, said disgruntled politicians in the Southeast geopolitical zone are using IPUB to malign the deputy speaker, that's Benjamin Kalu. Uh, they had said that um, their work cannot be complete without advocacy for the release of Namdekanu, that's the IPUB leader. Um, IPUB, in a statement by its media, publicly said they are more powerful, um, had accused the deputy speaker, uh, Benjamin Kalu, um, against the release of Namdi Kanu. And they're saying that this PISEP group has been created just to douse um, the love for, of Indubo towards uh, Namdi Kanu. Nevertheless, the PISEP, that's this new group, Peace in Southeast group, noted that while the governors and the traditional rulers are fighting to reduce violence, they are seeking relevance by using IPOB, um, IPOB uh, they're used by using IPOB and they're seeking peace but they want to push them to be killed like flies. So, just drama going on in that state right now. Okay, moving on quickly now to Vanguard. Let's find a story we've not taken. NNPC should have privatized refineries before rehabilitation, says Atiku. 83 illegal refineries uncovered in one week. I prepared myself for probe, says Buhari. Tinimbu Wiki rise against insecurity, vow renewed action, and palliative funds. There's plot to link Bajase source. Okay, which story? Okay, so NNPC says in the past weeks that they uncovered 83 illegal refineries in the Niger Delta. They also uncovered um, 15 illegal pipeline connections and um, over 211 incidents of oil theft and vandalism were reported. Seven of cases of uh, vandalism were also recorded in certain areas. So in rivers, they had seven, you know, where they had others. And I'm hoping I'm not taking someone's story. You have you taken have someone's taken story. <laughs> you have taken my I story. Read, I read yeah. the past first. So uh, former Vice President Atika Abubakar uh, mm -hmm. said yesterday that Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NMPC uh, Limited, should have privatized refineries before rehabilitation to avoid debt. Um, you know, he said that, um, he, um, I think NMPC had said that they had concluded plans over the government owned refineries to handing it over to private operators. And so he made a post on X saying that the company must explain to the satisfaction of Nigerians the benefits of his newly discovered approach to privatization. He wrote, and I quote, I've always advocated for far reaching reforms to reposition Nigeria's all sector and indeed other sectors of our. Economy. In particular, I had consistently called on Buhari administration to break his monopoly in all infrastructure sectors, including the refineries and give investors, both foreign and domestic, a larger role in funding and management. My position has been well laid out. He talked about his plan 2018 and my covenant with Nigeria 2022. But our suggestions fell on deaf ears. They refused to privatize the refineries. They left them idle for years while paying humongous staff uh, salaries to people and then they contracted a loan of 1.5 billion for rehabilitation now the current administration wants to turn <coughs> the rehabilitated refinery to private operations and maintenance and they need to come out and explain to us exactly how they arrived at this and to what benefit will it be to nigerians so our president yesterday during the book launch uh the book working with buhari reflections of a special Advisor, Media and Publicity, 2015 to 2023, <coughs> authored by Femi Additional, yesterday was launched. And there, our president said that his administration yeah, kept records of, of all their stewardship, knowing that one day they will be required to account for the trust that was entrusted in them. 
uh, Buari stated this during, during the book launch, and also um, while he noted the efforts of the, the, the author, Femi Adesino, and says without documentation and revision, human beings often have short memories, and unless events are recorded in cold print, some people could come and attempt to either distort or even obliterate recent history. But the fact that in our favor, the fact in our favor is that they were able to they ensure nothing was done in veil of secrecy. Uh, we were as transparent and accountable as possible, being aware of the fact that posterity will be their judge. So quite a, a lot of this happened at that event yesterday. Even our, our current president said that um, the Buhari never called him once to, to solicit for support in an in, in appointment for anybody to be in the office or to make recommendations for appointment. That he has been in Daura, minding his business, and he appreciates that. Um, the vice, former vice president, um, Professor Yomi, Yomi Oshibajo, also made a few comments, you know, talking about how, how much of a, a, I don't want to say jester, jocular man is uh, our president, oh, that he was they, rather funny. They say he has a great sense, a sense of humor. That he's the kind of person that he, I mean, he said he cracks a lot of jokes, yeah. and he laughs at himself a lot, and I mean, a lot of things, like, there was one I think we have that in common. I have a great sense of humor mm. as well. You do? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Very much. Of course, just your it. understanding of my humor is another problem. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyways. So, but it was very interesting. But it's just to get all the, the feedback from the book launch was quite interesting because everybody had something to say. Mm. But, but the book yeah. is... The, 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 yes. So the second story is in Tribune. Yes, but because right. it's about the book, should right, I just right, take right, it? Please. So this also has to do with the pre, our former president and his take on Emefili and why he did not take him out when he was um, running, for, <laughs> running for office. And he said that Emefile did not approach him to tell him that he was running, that the way we found out, that's how he found out as well. And wow. then um, he said that uh, he maintained that those, then the, uh, concerning the redesign policy that was implemented by um, Emefile, the president maintains that those who had a problem with the policy were individuals who had too much money. He said that it, um, what happened called for a cleaner um, exercise, um, election exercise. He says democracy also allows people to express their will and we do not attempt to control them. People understand the implications of their choices and would not force them. Then they said when he came in, why didn't he just take Emefile out? He says, yes, there were talks, but he didn't have any evidence. Yes. It's not the sort of person to just take out someone like that, punish someone without reason. Mm. He says, because nobody stays in an <coughs> office forever. Mm. And he, the way he's fair to that person, he hopes that too, um, the next person will be fair yeah. to him as well. All right, we have to wrap up. But he, he added that um, the issue of the cabal is a bloody, what is it, bloody nonsense. Mm. You know, the, the, the concept of a cabal in his cabinet is oh, formal. Mm -hmm. That's bloody nonsense. Okay, that is all we can take on front page review today. When we come back, back, we move on to the hot topic of the day. We're starting with the explosion that happened in the battle. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Last night's governor of your state, um, Shea Makindi, says two persons are confirmed killed in the explosion that took place in Ibadan, the capital of the state. The governor said the explosion, which injured about 77 people, was caused possibly by illegal miners who stored explosive devices in one of the buildings, especially in that Obodija area. Now, we'd like people to, around that area to please call in to share their experiences we have a few who are sending videos um, of their offices, what happened with the, 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 the tremor that was, that was felt within the offices and caused some, of their, some damage within their offices. Governor has also summoned an emergency security meeting for this morning on the matter. Joining us later on the show is a retired commissioner for police and special advisor to your state governor, internal security, uh, Fatai Oshin, who will be sharing his thoughts on it. But uh, we we'll just discuss, based on what we have so far, the governor is su suggesting that it's possible that illegal miners left explosive there and that's what went off. But what are your own takes? You can call us, especially if you're living in that area. We'd like to hear from you. 
Call us on the numbers on your screen, 081-076-4169-090-241-63440. You can also tweet to us at TVC, connect this hashtag, YourViewTVC, so we can read your tweet. Another explosion. And I mean, right now, two people dead, and that, that, that's too, too, too many. <laughs> and 77 injured, at least as of this morning. We're still waiting for uh, more reports and updates. But um, what are your initial thoughts? Let me just start with you, Nima. So just because I took the story on the front page, I got a message from Mr. Um, Olutoba Oshuloi, and he's saying that much more than four buildings collapsed mm -hmm. in that area, and it's not, you know, four, as reported. We know that a lot of buildings were damaged, but four, beyond yeah, four, uh, you know, were destroyed, you know. And I'm wondering... When I saw this story break yesterday evening, I was like, ah, earthquake, don't happen for Nigeria. Mm. But I followed up around 11 when I got up to PA and I saw that it was confirmed that it was due to explosives with this, in the city center. Bodija is an old city town and it's not where my uh, mom's um, family house in Ibadan is, is in Bodija. It's not an area that I know to be industrial or anything. I don't know, oh. uh, it's fully residential. Because when we hear and all of that, I'm wondering what exactly is happening mm. there. We don't have earthquakes here. We cannot start to use our hand to bring it to bring earthquakes. My initial fear was that is there a quarry around Budija? There's none. You know, you know, at quarries they have to use yes explosives. Heavy, yes. yes. So what is who now licensed the use of? Why would they even be mining? What kind of mining is happening there that is now illegal, that is not supposed to be controlled by mm. government? That's my own worry. If we need to have this conversation to a conclusion, every government closest to the people should be in control of some form of resources. Because what we, what we have is that in Oshun, they are stealing gold. In Zamfara, they are stealing gold. In uh, everywhere where we are saying it's all the mining and all of that minerals belong to the federal government, serious stealing is happening. Going on, yeah. Killing of people is happening. Why don't we have someone within the area control and pay to the federal, but let us not have an unaccounted for stealing of resources happening in any area? We'll, we'll talk about the issues yeah. to, later, to, because to I want to us to focus on the, on the issue the that issues happened, that happened. two Nigerians have died. Yes. Mm. And even the rescue operations, the, all the other issues surrounding how um, how people were rescued or not. Or, I mean, these exactly. are stories we're seeing. We're going to be uh, linking up with our correspondent in, in um, or you're very soon to let us know, give us an update, because cars and properties were destroyed, uh, right? Yes, you know, uh, so yes, for me, right now, the focus is on, you know, the humanitarian um, issue that's happened right now. Lives lost. You know, this year we've just gone from one issue to the other in our country, banditry, kidnappings, all sorts of things. Then we have this um, incident happen. And to hear that, you know, from, it's still unconfirmed as I hear, but what the main story we're hearing is that someone, some people may have put explosives in a particular place, which, were, which is this explosive owned by illegal miners. We, it's still all about security. Yeah. That people are able to move these sort of equipment and um, ammunition around the country and around the state undetected. without, yes, undetected until such a catastrophe happens is is really sad. I, you know, I really feel sad for the people that, that this happened to. Now, when it first broke out, the importance of also being on top of something immediately is the sort of stories that go out and people propagate all sorts of lies. At first, it was um, some of the response uh, the comments i was reading is oh boko haram had gotten into Ibadan yeah. and they had bombed people you know um different sorts of stories so that's why it's important to have government immediately step in to tell us what is happening and i hear that the governor has just said they, they were illegal miners that had explosives what is important is security over and over and over again. We see that this insecurity plays out in so many forms. It's not only when someone carries a gun and shoots at people or knocks on people's doors and drags people out. It's also that people are able to move um, arms and ammunition across our country. What, what is happening? Is it that 
really there's no manpower or just that we're so indifferent, you know, serious inefficiencies. We don't think that Nigeria is open to, um, you know, unscrupulous people taking advantage of our people. It's as if, you know, Nigeria, sometimes I think we're just all sitting down, just, you know, we're up, to the, we wake up in the morning, we go to bed. The work that's supposed to be done by institutions to protect people, I don't, I, I don't feel their presence. I don't feel their, their you know, like they are doing the work. Yeah. Why would such a thing happen? I would have preferred, wouldn't we all have preferred, wouldn't it all have been better if they were caught in transit? We got intelligence this was happening in transit. Or people in the community would be noticing a particular movement into this place. It does not seem normal. And so you cordon up the area and think, why do we have to wait for it to get here? Some of the issues don't have to get this bad before we do anything about let me, let me it. Let me come to you, BC, because it's one thing for government to protect us. Yeah. It's another thing for we, the people, to protect to take ourselves, responsibility. to take responsibility. Yeah. Because I know that there's only so much government can, can do. do. But let, well, let me come yeah. to you. What are your government thoughts? can actually not be everywhere. So even though we know that uh, they have a job, they have a first responsibility to protect us, uh, they, won't, they can't be everywhere. And looking at the facts on ground, we do not even have the manpower to be everywhere. And that's why we, as citizens, must take responsibility to begin to protect ourselves. When you are in a place and you're noticing some movements that are not normal, you must speak out. And government also must provide a safe heaven for people to speak. One of the reasons people don't want to speak out, want to just drink water and mind their business, is because they are not protected. You can speak out today and tomorrow you disappear. You're kidnapped or you're killed and nobody's there to save you. So it's safer for you to just mind your life, go to your church, pray to your God mm. and just focus. Whether you see something happening that is none of your business, you just face, in fact, you even raise your children to learn to mind their business mm. because of the sort of country that we have. So for us to get to a point where everybody's holding everybody accountable, government must put measures in place to protect Nigerians who would act as a watchdog. You cannot expect us to be responsible. When we get responsible, we get into fire. When we get responsible, we get killed. Nobody wants to risk their life. That's on one hand. Uh, secondly, I think we're just um, wicked people because the reason for all of this illegal mining, illegal stealing of our resources is just greed. You just want to um, you know, get as much as you can get from a system Killing people along the way, you don't care as long as you're able to make it. And it's not just a few people that are doing this. There's a strong, my opinion, cartel that's behind it. The people who are the ones on ground are really not the ones. They are just the foot soldiers. They are the ones just being paid to do the work. Where does the money go to? Where do they move their finances to? We must begin as a government to investigate. Are they also part of us, even in that government? Are we really ready? to expose all of these people. Because um, I think there's this saying that um, if any form of um, illegality, banditry. terrorism, okay, insurgency. banditry, insurgency that lasts more than 24 hours, that some very powerful people are behind it. So we must begin to ask ourselves, are we ready to fight this fight? Or are we just paying lip service to, OK, well, we know we don't have enough people, we don't have enough this, we don't have enough that, and tomorrow another one happens. And we dine and wine with those people who are killing our brothers and sisters just to make ends meet. We need to decide. Um, it's very painful. I had yeah. to go out to uh, the people that lost their lives in this. I hope that we'll have more information as yeah. to exactly what happened yeah. in that place. We'll go on a very short break. When we come out, we'll try to get in our correspondent from that area to tell us exactly, give us an update. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So joining the conversation right now is our correspondent, Olaide Uyewole. He is um, at the TVC News correspondent in Ibadan right now. Good morning, Olaide. Are you there? Good morning. Thanks for joining us. So give us a bit of an update um, the morning after, after the explosion. What's going on around you? So I can confirm to you that it's been a very, very busy day for those carrying out the rescue operations. And I can confirm to you that and um, right now, two bodies have been recovered. And from what we learned, one of the bodies uh, 
Um, they say it's a, it's a commander trying to respond to uh, uh, trying to respond to whatever is going on within uh, his environment. So they were able to recover two bodies. One of the bodies uh, was actually bad and put in the ambulance, and while the other one, and we learned it, uh, the two conscious of whatever is going on around it. So we expect we expect that this. Uh, those carrying out the rescue operations uh, give us more updates uh, as, as, as for who, uh, how many people have been rescued and if people are still under the... Under Lady, the, did you say six or two persons? Six people confirmed or six persons? Uh, well, I can only report what I can see. As of yesterday, we saw a dead body on the floor. That is one. And then two bodies today. Well, we have other, uh, we have videos online circulating that people did that. So, but we have to wait for relevant authorities and agencies to give us, give us an Actually. update. So we don't want to, or I, I actually don't want um, it to be on speculation. So, so far I can say that two people are, have been uh, reported dead. dead. That okay. was last night, and the one saw today. Okay. Uh, All right. The same. So, um, can you confirm to us exactly uh, what caused the explosion and what are the people around saying concerning that particular house, probably where it started from? So, well, we were able to speak with one of the survivors yesterday and uh, he told us that they have been observing uh, uh, some people who are, who are involved in illegal mining within the neighborhood and then that yesterday around 8 o'clock, he said that uh, he just noticed a kind of spark around him. And then before he could go in and come back, the whole place was already, uh, was already in uh, disarray. So he confirmed to us that um, they had dynamite there or explosives in their, in their residence. Yeah, so which he said led to, I mean, the, the disaster. And uh, well, one would wonder that uh, since you knew that kind of shady activities were going on within that um, um, premises. Why did you not raise an alarm for relevant agencies to come and, I mean, speak to the situation, but it has happened, and then we hope that um, this will be um, a lesson to everyone. And when you notice something shady around you, I mean, you say something for relevant agencies to come and um, take over the situation. Okay. Okay, so um, apart from the particular building where the explosives went off. We hear that so many other surrounding buildings were affected as well. Is it possible to sort of draw a picture for us on how far this explosion went? And how many well, properties um, you think well, were lost? It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate that I cannot tilt my camera. I'm a little bit far away from the scene, but um, I, I can just paint a picture of the place. About two to three or four buildings were leveled down to the ground. You would not even know that there was a building um, at that particular point before. A particular woman came last night and was crying. You know what she said? She said, this is where my uncle's house used to be. It was very, very sad for us who have heard that. So they had to take her away from the scene so that she would not do anything drastic. So you can imagine. So. I can also confirm to you that even um, houses that are like 500 meters, six, 700 meters away from that particular scene were affected. Their glasses were broken down. Their roofs were totally taken off. So you, can now, you can now imagine how the actual scene would be. So rescue operations are going. Trains have, I mean, have been deployed to the scene, and we expect that more of this it be given to us as, as the situation, I mean, unfolds. <clears throat> I was going to ask about rescue operations anyway and how people are responding. In the papers, we took it that, you know, they were being rushed to the UCH. They have other hospitals that they are assisting, uh, that, is, that are assisting them with this. And do they have um, a number to reach, to call for, you know, to, for government to come and assist in rescue? So, well, I, I don't, I, if I, um, there is no particular uh, number on the ground for now, but I can confirm to you that other hospitals that um, these casualties are 
uh, from other private hospitals, and then the governor um, yesterday with um, other government officials went to to UCA yesterday to see some of the victims. And one of the things that the governor said yesterday was that we were going to take care of the views of those who were affected, the victims who were affected. And for those who have been displaced, temporary accommodation will be provided for them, pending the time that everything will be sorted out. So that, that is what is on top. Uh, for, so for those of us, give us a picture of the neighborhood. Is it a residential area? Is it a market area? Is it industrial? Is it somewhere that um, has quite a bit of traffic? Give us an idea of the, the environment this um, explosion occurred. Yes, it's a residential area. Uh, surprisingly, it's an estate here at Old Bodija. So there is no traffic congestion at all. So you have to drive in like one, or, or one kilometer away from the main road down to the president. So one would wonder, well, one would also wonder that uh, could there be any form of illegal uh, mining activities going on within this, uh, exactly. within this place. But then we also learned that they were just keeping some of these explosives yeah. there. Yeah. You know, it, you can't become explosive around that someone who engages in illegal mining. So they just keep some of these things there. I mean, you would think that they didn't know that this this will be very dangerous to people who are living around there. But like I said, it has happened, and we hope that this doesn't, I mean, repeat okay. itself again. All right. Um, the, particular, the particular building where these explosives went off before then, was it a residential building? Would, would the people around know if there were just families living in there, or was it used as an office complex? How was it used before? Well, from what we learned, from one of the survivors yesterday, it is purely a residential area. If I will learn that there is an hostel beside the building, there is an hostel beside the building where students uh, also uh, were living. So this this is purely a residential area. I want to wonder that why could that, why could this have happened? This is not a commercial area. This is not uh, a complex where we, where people can say okay they are selling something and they can use that avenue to carry out some of the shady activities. This is purely a residential area at Old Bojija in Bago. Okay. Can you confirm to us some agencies that are present there trying to, you know, rescue the people and sort out the area? Of course, there is, there is NEMA, there is Red Cross, there is uh, uh, the Federal Fire Service, there is also the State Fire Service and... Um, then we have other, uh, what are they called? We have Boy Scouts, we have other uh, people who have come to also, I mean, give a helping hand to all of these agencies to ensure that, I mean, the, the situation is uh, brought under yeah. control. But I can confirm to you that um, um, peace, has, um, peace and calm has returned to, okay. to the uh, environment. All right, the, the people were panicking. They were not aware of what happened. So, you know, a lot of rumor. Uh, rumors went out that it was bomb explosion or some insurgent groups have come here to yeah. do this and all of that. And so this, has, this really caused panic um, for people living around yeah. the environment. But yesterday, but when it was around, it are concerns that uh, there were some explosive scares here. So we hope that uh, the government and relevant agencies will also ensure that all of these buildings around are totally and properly checked. If this, they still have some of these things around. But today, we saw sniff dogs being, I mean, also deployed to the scene, trying to perceive if okay. they still have some of these explosives around. So, but so far, they have not discovered any. Okay. Thank you very much, Olaid. Let me let you go at this point. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, and we come back to the studio to the ladies. I mean, this is quite disheartening. There was something that mm -hmm. he said that uh, when you, while interviewing the survivor, he was saying that, why would you know something like this is happening and not even um, alert the authorities? And it occurred to me that many people just don't, we don't know how connected these people are to, to even know how Nigeria is. You're thinking, the person that is carrying this illegal, they don't even know what is suspicious, but mm. they're going to report them. I might also be incriminated somewhat where they, they call me an accomplice. You know, things, the system must be structured in a way that people must feel comfortable safe. and safe. 
in, 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 in whistleblowing and mm. telling the, the, the officials things they see and observe because this, this has a ripple effect on many companies. Yeah. I mean, this is, this, um, this is actually an office. So, yeah. so if that's in a residential yeah. area, some people are saying that some, there's this an office even be that, farther away from, farther away from where it happened. So even Botra's this point, we have a message here. Uh, Blessed One says, in 2013, a 419 money washer was using a shop close to mine. We called the police. They came to arrest them and we released them four hours. These guys came back to tell us that they are where we called the police. So that's why a lot of Nigerians will see these things and face their direction because they yeah. don't want to get into trouble. And the, so on one hand, the government cannot say, you two need to be responsible when they do not give us a safe mm. haven to be responsible. Exactly. Balance it and you see yeah. how people yes. will just... So there's another... But there's a, numbers. Let me take this call from Shola and I'll come to you. Good morning, Shola. Thanks for calling. Uh, good morning. Um, it's sad to see what is happening to Biden from yeah. yesterday. Um... One of my cousins came this morning telling me, I thought it was even the commercial places like uh, Bodija, where they are selling plants or mechanical places that used to go up in small country towns. But Bodija, this residential area, that's an equivalent of a year of the old, like Jericho area, which is like VI and so on and so forth. Why do they allow us to do I was watching your program before you came on, on board. The man that was talking from London was talking about security. Security is everybody's business. For that amount of explosives that is uh, thrown in that place, will you tell me that nobody in the area or the neighborhood didn't see anything at least? And tell anybody, if you see something, say something. We are talking about the security. Look at the bandits that we are talking. Because some people know, all these governors, all these chairmen, they get so much security votes every month. What do they do with it? So, if I and you are in the business, and you are getting 10 million, 50 million in a month that you don't account for, and I'm just walking the street having probably 1,000, 5,000 in my pocket, I'm going to organize somebody to come and get some of that 10 million. When they are talking about, so one of your staff was saying about accountability. Why can the federal government not tell us how much they are giving this government? Right. Everyone okay. as a security vote. What? Thank mm -hmm. you very much, Shada. Okay. Yes, I was going to say because um, BC had mentioned why some people may not, why many people don't go and report to the authorities. I feel that that's one on the one hand, but there's also a school of thought. Mm of Nigerians who feel that when they find, when they see people doing thing, illegal things, they sort of encourage it or support it in a way that, eh, say they are chopping, you two, you are chopping your own. But the thing with that is, we are the ones that would still suffer the consequences. So when you look away, you're looking away. If it, if it doesn't happen to you directly, it may happen to a family member or your community. So it's important that we are the, we understand the responsibility of protecting ourselves, of being our own whistleblowers and being our own police. And if, when, when we have that attitude, really, I feel that it will, it will break the, the, um, the, the way that people, you know, the, the way we feel securities respond to us when we report things. When all of us come together as a community, we notice something and we report to the police and the police doesn't do anything and you come around that you know as a community and insist we've seen that happen we insist what is happening here we're not going to let this pass until you take pictures you take mm. videos you make it such a big deal because he the reporter said the correspondent said they were aware that something was fishy mm. something wasn't going on right in that community and they said they said nothing you know and here they are today because you know you you feel it's not my business or I'm afraid the police will not listen to me. But if you remember that this is about your life and about your children's life and mm. about your properties, then we'll do, do better. Something. You know, the correspondent also mentioned that maybe this is a lesson. I'm sad that this has to be the lesson, yes. that lives have to be lost for us to learn this lesson. And this I hope point. it's also a lesson to security officials that when people come to you with um, with reports like this, with intelligence reports like this, please let's take it seriously and mm. not make the victims the the culprits. Exactly.
We know the, let me take this call from Bashiru. Thanks for calling. Hello, good morning. Good morning, morning, sir. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, the problem we are having in this country, we don't know anything about us, anything called security. You are telling us uh, illegal miners in Ibadan environment. Then who are these illegal miners? Are they Okada riders? Are they bricklayers? These are people, they are the backbone of people who are well to do the society. And the government does not aware. This life is being getting lost in this country. I don't understand this country we are living. Life gets lost on daily basis. Reckless, recklessly. No security, nothing. All these things is just a problem. That's just my contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bashir. Go ahead. You know, you know uh, when BC was talking about, you know, people withdrawing, and I'm thinking, this is a residential estate where people live. And there's power in the collective. What's the use of the community development uh, centers that we have? The CDS, the meetings, the landlords and the whatever residence meetings. What are you people you doing when you can't sit together and say, come on, they are brought inflammables next door, you know? I remember when somebody decided to sell gas on the streets. Two, three people in my estate complained that this is an inflammable. How are we going to deal with it? And other people are like, eh, ah, so, so they are brought here, we'll be buying gas now. You have a problem with it, you know? But at least someone spoke. Yeah. So in case something happens tomorrow, you cannot just be like, hey, yeah, I don't even attend to those AIA parties. Mm. Mm. There's a guy who does one kind of inflammable business. And when one day thing flared up in the slum, the entire slum was raised. Everybody was here. Yeah, I just went to my house to sleep. Because just, just when we to... talk yeah. and you don't want to listen, if it happens, yeah. but if it is next door to me, be sure you'll be hearing bang, bang, bang. I will trouble you. Somebody just sent me a message related no, to that. that there is a, it, there's a gas filling station just next to my estate in Lekki, very close to House on the Rock. It's scary. I remember the explosion that occurred in uh, CMD, yeah, Magodo area years back. These are these these these, these are, are the issues. So when you have those kind of and they get licenses for this, you can't just start a gas um, the filling without station a license. In, without a license. So governments are aware that if they are licensed in that neighborhood now, we as residents we also want gas areas within not too far away. So how do we meet halfway where it's not it's not so close, but it's not well, so far. You are talking of the sophisticated outfit where they have a safety van where they will make, meet yeah. all the guidelines. Yes. Remember what happened in Ajegunle? The guy in the shop. With three, four, five cylinders. Yeah. Yeah. That's the situation I just explained. Me, I'm not talking. Yeah. Those yeah even that. Okay, so we have a ones. huge one like that at Abulia, though. That is, you know, I drive to everybody can drive there and buy their gas, but no, they want it next door. Yes. And that convenience comes at a cost. Yes, a serious it's, cost. So the CDA, the residential meetings, we can sit down and say this and this are the things we will allow. This and these are the things that we cannot allow because when the wahala comes. Before government reaches you, that's the use. You are, you are the first government. And the organization that you have, the kind of organization that you run, is why government will come and say that we met a group of people we can talk to. If Bodija is a residential area and you allow this, come, even, if, even let's just assume that you don't know what they're doing. The activities that they are doing that you cannot explain, so that you don't understand, you cannot question that. Yeah. Okay. Let me take Kola Wale and wrap up with this. Kola Wale, we have to bring in our guest. Kola Wale, thanks for calling your live. All right, good morning. My name is Atata. I'm calling from Portacon. This is my first time calling. Welcome to the so show. Thank you so much. Um, I think I'll start by saying, firstly, I, I think the problem that we have as Nigerians is education. And I'm not saying going, go to school. I'm saying education, <laughs> all realms of activities are from governance to citizenry. Why am I saying this? Everybody is complacent of what has happened today. Mm. And it's not a new thing. From both government officials to communities, we end, most times we hear community members saying, oh, we're not going to talk because they have people working there. How will they feed? You also have people in high places who are also using this place as ways of claiming their money. You also have security agencies who are also allegedly, you know, co confining with people in the community to allow this process. So at the end of the day, if everybody from grassroots to high level is aware of the consequences of the decisions they make in life, Certain things that is happening in Nigeria will not happen. Here in River State, there are sometimes you see things that are illegal. They've made illegality legal within the community, whereby even if you speak about it, you'll be the person that will be the bad person there. So I think we need to just increase our education level. I mean, yeah. really, people need to be educated. Thank you very much. I see a hand. That there's another caller waiting. Hello, caller Wale, you're live. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, this explosive 
if it's started by when no Nigeria and their license, it comes through the airport. 2010, one of my in law was a driver and he had a truck that carried this explosive. Before he go for the explosive to carry it at the airport, he will go to the police station, take the approved paper of the importation of the explosive to the police station. Then they will now give him a police escort. That police escort will come with him from Lagos to Abuja. But the funny thing is that when this man collects this explosive, he will come and sleep overnight in my place. Hmm. One day he came to my mind, this thing I still do because he has to drive overnight because of the heat, uh, because of the weather in the country. They have to carry this explosive in the, in the middle of the night to their destination so that there will be no explosion. What I'm thinking is that that is bad own. It's meant for the quarry, and those people are stealing it to that place to use for another project. And those around are not aware of people bringing a protein to their neighborhood. Yeah. So the Thank you. So that's another version. So is he saying that there are some people that actually get the approval from government or from, from license from the police to use that explosive for queries. So in this situation, he's to essentially in his own story of somebody he knows that actually got that license, but they have to drive it at a certain time at night because of the weather to its destination. But we don't know yet. That's why the reporter was saying that we should wait for the official um, the, the after investigations have been concluded. We know exactly the cause of it. What was the source of the explosion? If the intention was for the illegal minery, am I mining, or was it for the quarry? What exactly is it? We'll find out after investigation has been concluded. But for now, we just need to focus on the victims and make sure that they get the, um, the, the medical services they require urgently so we don't have additional deaths in our hands. You know what occurred to me when I was looking at that? I saw military officers there, and I'm hoping that um, they've made sure that all the explosives are, you know, <laughs> detonated. Yes. So that we don't have others, repeat. you know, a repeat of it while people are trying to rescue the ones that... It's, this is sad. Really sad. It looks like a war zone. When I mean, we when we look at Syria, we have to Afghanistan, wrap up on this. Normally... But that's all we can take on this segment. But again, once again, our hearts go out to um, those who have lost their lives. And we'll also wait for the official report of the explosion to know exactly the cause of it. And hopefully, we can have some kind of a deterrent from this happening in the future. Let's go on a break now. We'll come back and bring in our guest for today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So joining us on the show is a renowned leadership trainer, an astute business and relationship coach based in Lagos, Nigeria, with over two decades of experience in ministry and leadership with a passion for helping people discover their purpose and develop their leadership potential. Welcome with us, none other than Pastor Godman Akilabi in the building. You. Your first time on our show? Yes. You're very uh, welcome, sir. You're welcome. Thank we you. know of Pastor Godman, been very popular. Everybody knows Pastor Godman, but we say, you know what? It's time for you to get on your view because if you don't come on your view, they've not heard you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> good to have you on the show, sir. It's good to be here. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I watch your view and I love uh, the, the discussion, the, uh, you know, the, the perspectives yes. that come into issues, yeah. especially. Um, issues, burning issues yeah. around the country and globally. Yeah. So we have just uh, about 40 minutes with you. I'll try to break that into a few parts uh, because I know one of your core is leadership. And I think that um, we all as Nigerians agree that leadership is, a, is, a, is the core of how we can actually move this nation forward. Um, we need proper leadership. And now we've passed elections. People are hoping for the best in our country. But people are still worried because it's one thing for the head to say, I want to go this way. But there are multiple people underneath him that may not be aligned with that vision. So in, in your view, how does a leader ensure that every part 
within his own group or within his own administration or within a company aligns with the vision. It's one thing for an MD to say, we are going here. It's one thing for a chairman to say, this is what we want to achieve. But there are other people within that industry that, that may agree but may not be totally aligned with the direction. So how does a leader get people to focus on where we are heading so we are all aligned? Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. I think it's important for us to understand that um, uh, leadership is both a science and an art. You know, it's, um, it's, it's both about the leader Social science. and uh, the people and the environment. So how do I mean is that the, the most important thing about leadership is vision. Uh, we're done with elections now and we have a new administration and they're, they're, they're trying their best to just uh, put the right things in place to do a fantastic job. But a need, there's a need for uh, a vivid vision that every Nigerian can key into. Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. If we say we're building a nation where every Nigerian can prosper in Nigeria, notwithstanding what part of the country uh, you hail from, or your religious orientation and all those other things. Then we all know that, okay, first thing about this vision is that we're gonna put our biases behind us. Uh, we're gonna focus on how we're gonna get this country to become better so that all of us can collectively benefit from it. Mm. Uh, the moment we can strike at that and sell that vision very well, one is that visioning, uh, conditions the heart of people and then it conditions the environment that's what it does everybody starts to see like okay this is why we're here this is what we want to do we say that a leader knows the way shows the way and leads the way you understand so uh, the, the, the essence of that is the first and foremost that the leader knows the way knows where we're going and then shows the way leads the way. So we exemplify it, we sell the vision, and then people start to buy into it. See, if we, let me just say this last thing. If we um, look at the way things are, Nigerians are perhaps uh, one of the most difficult people to lead. I was about to say that. Yeah, and our environment also makes it difficult to lead. We are multi-ethnic, multi-tribal, all right? We're multi-religious. Um, and then we have very astute people. How do you lead, lead a pack of tigers? Mm. <laughs> you, you know. But, but yeah. also we're traumatized people. We have been... That's another problem in itself. We have for because, years. Yeah, then we need healing. Mm. You mm. understand? Because when you're leading uh, 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 people who are bleeding, <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's tough because you have to literally drag them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. When you're leading uh, people who have been traumatized, who are afraid, they're very cynical. Uh, they don't believe what you say. Uh, you know, they, they struggle to actually believe the lead in leadership and to trust. So there's, there's, a, uh, there, there's a trust deficit in our environment. So even as I'm talking now, some people are second guessing what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> because you, 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 you can't trust a pastor. That's what they say. You can't trust a politician. Uh, you, you don't trust journalists. They always mm, lying. Trust a lawyer. Yeah, you don't trust a lawyer. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. so people just so find trust? it. Who do you trust? That's Nobody. the question. You can't trust yourself. No, it means that we have a problem mm -hmm. <laughs> because we can't trust each other. Yeah. Yeah. Nigerians might be difficult people. who were not people without values in yes. the past. Yeah. But now, we're talking with the former minister for works and housing on the show on Friday, and it was largely about the corruption we're dealing with. Generally, is largely about the loss of values. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with it because there's different meaning now to everything. So it's not necessarily stealing. You know, carry gun now is yao. You know, I, I, you go to my village and a parent is celebrating a property built or the proceeds of that kind of thing mm -hmm. and saying, hey, you didn't steal. That's what all his mates are doing. You know, how do we bring people who know that what they are doing is bad, but they just want to give it a different name? The, Niger the new Nigeria where it's not necessarily prostitution is, uh, is the hustling, hustling. Mm -hmm. you know? How do we bring people, because they know, they just want to give it a different name, to give it the name that it is. Uh, thank you. It's important that we know that to achieve um, our goal, the vision has to be clear. All of us, as much as possible, you know, you can't get everybody on the bus from day one, but 
how we measure success in leadership is how many people are getting on the bus as we go. Mm. Yeah. So from day one, you just have skeptics, you have uh, you know, laggards, people yeah. who, don't, who don't believe in it. Yeah. But gradually, people start to see. And get on the bus. But back to what you said, what makes people, what, what, what helps you to get more people on the bus is the, how you help them uh, in reevaluating the values with which they live their lives. Uh, in a value-driven uh, society, everybody is trying to judge what they do based on the values that they hold dear mm -hmm. to themselves. One of the things that has affected our value orientation as a people um, is poverty. To a poor person uh, who wants to survive, many things are not wrong mm. because you are now using your survival instinct to <clears throat> judge the values with which you live. Mm. Not what is right, but what can keep me alive. Mm. You know, that's why we, we then choose the wrong words rather than using the right words. So we say stealing is not corruption. It's hustling. Yeah, it's hustling. Mm. Uh, Yahoo is not this and all. But you know that what I do, I don't live in isolation. We're Africans. We live on the principle of Ubuntu, which is I am because you are. Uh, we're connected with each other. How, do, how, how did that? We? Uh, yeah, well, well, that's, that's how, that's yeah. how we that's came, that's where we came from. Uh, going back to what Neymar yeah. said, that's where we came from. Yeah. Because as Africans, we, we had values. Yeah. Ubuntu is one of our values, which is, I, I val that's what Christianity calls yeah, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how, how did I know? Lots of eat? questions for you, <laughs> yes. so let me so, let you so pause let me you there. Ask, I have to yeah. You mentioned that it's, it's, it's very difficult to lead a people mm. when they are bleeding. Mm. And this also brings me to the role of the church. Because when everyone is bleeding mm. and requires healing, we were supposed to have institutions like the religious institutions that would help to assist government mm. in healing the people so that they are ready for that leadership. Mm. Now, where does the church, and this is not just the church now because you're a pastor, that's amazing, religious church, but religious institutions, what role do they play in helping the people to heal and understand their civic responsibilities? Mm. And what role do you think um, the leadership will take on to make people more trusting? Because mm. right now what we see, we don't see enough to trust. We can't believe in what we see because it's, the more you look, the less you see. So give me those two roles you yeah. think that um, those yeah, two institutions Yeah, so, so the, 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 the religious institutions have a role. One of the roles is to be the conscience of the nation. Mm. Yeah. Whether, you know, whatever religion, the conscience of the nation. Uh, we, we stand for the truth and we steer the nation on the path of truth, uh, um, on the path of, you know, uh, collectivism, uh, on the part where everybody's interest is protected. The moment religious institutions start to pander uh, to uh, maybe a tribe or our own religion or this, we, we, we are making a great mistake uh, because we need to be the center and the pillar of truth and we have to be the conscience of the nation. The adherent of every religion, they're looking forward to their religious institution or the religious leaders uh, sometimes to just signal them to show them um, how they should be thinking and all that. And when they start to see that they can't trust their leaders or the institution themselves are the ones saying, um, uh, maybe uh, we should embrace this unity and stuff like that, it starts to affect how the people think. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So religious institutions uh, must be the conscience of the nation and then model, models. We, the religious institutions must model nation building and what will make the nation work. Mm. Uh, there's nothing as soothing as seeing hope demonstrated in practical terms. You know, uh, uh, when hope is lost, <laughs> a lot is lost. Because if, if, when somebody is sick or bleeding, what the person wants to hear is don't give up. Yeah, uh, we're soon going to get there. Uh, you know, yeah. respite is here, mm. healing is here. Mm. But when you look up to uh, a place where you're supposed to get that hope from, and you can't get it because it's not model, it's not spoken about, yeah. uh, uh, and all that, the bleeding continues. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy you're talking about modeling. I have what, well, I may consider a dilemma. Maybe you may not see it that way. 
where, especially with uh, religious institutions, yeah. where on the one hand, you know, we expect them to be strong and true through all times in a ever-changing, evolving world. Yeah. And then um, when they do that, we accuse them of just not being, you know, evolving as well or growing as the people are growing. And then we have an uh, institution that decides, okay, this is an ever-evolving world. We need to change. And people accuse religious institutions of pandering to things that may not be of value because they are trying to catch on to this ever-changing world. How do you, how do you, as a pastor, as your church and religious institutions now, um, how do they place themselves so that they are not seen to pander and they are not seen to be outdated? Okay, thank you. Um, that's important, uh, the differences between values and methodologies. Yeah, we live true to our values, but in a changing world, you can vary your method. Um, there's a principle of true north. As we're here right now, uh, if I say each of us should point to the north, <laughs> you will be surprised. <laughs> Just trying to point. Based on where your north is ahead. there. <laughs> because Morales north may be different from Nimat's north. Sure. Based on, they will just use North something to calculate their knot and say, that's my knot, this is your knot. Mm. But if I came in here with a compass, mm. then the compass will resolve the issue for us. Mm. Yeah, uh, because uh, we don't choose our knot. I mean, in aviation, if you are flying and your pilot says, I, I came into this jet with my knot, I don't need the compass in the aircraft, you're not going to get to where you're going. You're going to land in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So, that, that, so uh, when the knot does not change, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm which is the value. Leaders have to be principle-centered and value-driven. When we're principle-centered and value-driven, our methodologies can change. Things are changing around us. Mm -hmm. the, way, the way we dress, mm -hmm. even the way we communicate, mm -hmm. the technology we engage. So, so you have reached where we are. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, and all those things. Okay. But, the, the, but what should not change is the value and the principles that by which we lead. Have that anymore. Mm. That's well, for some people, true. principles, is, the way they dress is a yeah. principle for them. Mm. And uh, then, I know, you see, the, the issue is this. Is it a real principle? It's not a real principle. <laughs> <laughs> Dressing is more about it's culture. Tangible, yeah. yeah, we learn it from each other. And each, each, each uh, society then have culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the culture, I mean, the dressing in Africa is different from the dressing in, in Britain. You understand what oh, I'm saying? Definitely. Europe. So it's cultural. Yeah, but when you talk about the principle like diligence or truth. Intangible. Yeah, principle. truth is truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's either is black all. or white. We have reached where we are going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is only here we have African time. We don't have, we don't really, do we really have those values? Back in primary school, values were drummed in, you know, at assembly grounds and all of that. But today, is the school bus that will do a one way full of kids that will do a one way. Are those values, do we have them anymore? anymore yeah. Really? Yeah, we, we the, 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 the values seem to be eluding us. They're fading away. And it's a collective responsibility for all of us. Mm. Uh, and, you know, just like you just spoke about kids in primary school right now. Look, this thing starts from home. You can imagine a child. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, <laughs> my kids are a lot older now. Uh, my first daughter is 19. You know, she's an under, undergraduate. Um, uh, when they were younger, I remember one day I was driving <laughs> here in Lagos, and my kids were in the car, and the light was yellow, and I went. And my, the, my two daughters, I think one was maybe seven, and another one was five, they started an argument at the back of the car. One said, Daddy still drove off uh, on, you know, yeah, yellow yeah. lights. Yeah. And one said that was wrong. The other one said, eh, let's ask him. But, my, but, you know, the other one said, I read in a book that yellow means you have to slow down. Mm. It's not maybe a, not a complete stop, but you don't increase your speed. You actually slow down because what is coming next is red, red and you have to stop. Mm. And at the end of the day, I had to apologize to them mm. because I didn't want to teach them the wrong thing. Yeah. I could have argued my way and said, it just turned yellow and I felt I could go. And this is how... But then you confuse values. them. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would have confused them. But I had to apologize to them. Oh, it's true. You are right. 
I should have stopped or I should have slowed down because what is coming next is red. So when, you, when we overlook a lot of those things and we just move on, we are raising another generation. You see, every generation mm. uh, is an improvement of the previous. So what I hear you If saying. we put uh, bad things in their heart, they're going to Ew. give us in a new dimension. So what, what, what talking about leadership. Yeah. I, want, I, want us, I, want us, I want us to, because there are different parts of it, as I said. We're doing uh, the country, religion, and relationships and the home. Yeah. Um, let's bring it back to the home because you took us, you took us there. Leadership in the home is changing yeah. because more women are now empowered. And more women don't feel like we are the neck anymore, we are the heads, because we are all, we have equal stakes here. So, um, what are you saying? I can't no follow now. Not <laughs> yeah. any head. I'm just saying home. those many women I in the know. home I now, I'm just saying that I'm now empowered. Mm -hmm. um, the roles are changing. Um, even some of the men are not living up to their leadership roles anymore. Yeah. Um, some of them just feel like, listen, since you're making all the money, I'd rather just stay here and... and, and but women need them to, to, be, to be leaders. Mm -hmm. How do we help these men in, in homes where they're just not leading as they should anymore? Mm. Um, the times are very tough, I, you know, but changing times will not really change principles. If not, we'll lead ourselves to anarchy. Mm. Yeah. Um, we, we have to be more uh, flexible as we go. But one thing is certain. Uh, <laughs> the man, traditionally speaking, is the head of the home. Leadership comes with responsibility. The problem that we have right now is people want to lead, but they don't want to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of men who want to assert themselves in their homes, mm -hmm. but they're not ready to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So if I share responsibility, I should be willing to share part of my leadership. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I should be willing to yeah, share part okay. of my leadership. Um, so it, 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 you can't tell a woman we're going to share our strength 50-50, but yet she, she shouldn't have a say in any matter at home. You're going to create a, a, a state of you know, anarchy uh, because the woman starts to feel oppressed. Yeah. And, um, what, if she cannot, yeah. what if she doesn't share in the rent, for mm. instance? Mm for men that, you know, yeah. will not allow. And then she lives in the house. Yes. She's married to you. But yeah. because she didn't share, does it mean that she does not then have deserve that voice. respect of first refusal? No, 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 also the, money is not the only thing that gives you a voice in your home. I just use that as an, an example. example. Okay. Yeah, but it's not the only thing that gives you a voice. See, two people coming together. It's not a safe example because of <laughs> yes, the yes, like yes, you know. So uh, um, uh, thank you for, for pointing that out. See, um, in a home, two people came together and said, let's form a family unit. There's a minimum level of respect, trust, and, you know, and cordiality and yeah. friendship that should ensue yeah. if we want to go far yeah. with this arrangement. Sure. Yeah. And that respect says that um, I don't know it all. Mm. You are here because you're supposed to be my better half. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Okay. Uh -huh. And you're supposed to watch my blind spot. See, when I concentrate like this, I can't see what is Laser. on the side. Mm. Uh -huh. Laser focus. focus. So I have other people. And, the, and the, the most important person around me is my wife that should be able to cover oh, my, my blind, blind spot, spot and tell me, oh, you're not saying that. You need to say it this way. It is my best interest to, to respect listen. and listen uh, to that. If not, I, 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 I ignore at my peril. And that's what we're seeing today. Mm. Many men who are, you know, uh, failing, either morally or business-wise, just because they refuse to listen to their spouses. And the same thing for women, too. I, I mean, as a relationship coach, I've sat with men, women, who have brought the brunt of not listening to their spouses, you know. So it's not even exclusive right. to men, yeah. even some women. Okay, yeah. so still on the home and relationship, some of the issues that we discuss here, one of it comes, one of the things that would, that has come up is, uh, let's say, a father and husband who financially is unable to, you know, carry the weight mm. for a period. This is not a lazy man. Yeah. This is a man unwilling to work, but is unable to do it. And he has a partner who has it all. Um, in what other ways can he show leadership, you know, without feeling as if he's inadequate or not um, pulling his weight in the home? You know, um... Women love 
to have a sense of security from their home, mm -hmm. uh, that somebody is leading them. And leadership will not always be about money. If not, our values will be upside down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything will not be about Sorry. money. You, you know, um, leadership is about vision. Leadership is about support. Leadership is about protection. So for a man to lead a woman who is empowered, an empowered woman, somewhat even more empowered than you are, mm -hmm. you have to play to your strengths, which are the intangibles. Yeah. How do you make a woman feel loved? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, how do you make a woman feel protected, that you have her best interest at, at, at all times? Okay. Yeah. How do you make a woman, you know, feel respected and feel appreciated that she has gone to work? You are, you don't have an income right now. Mm. Uh, my own understanding about income in a home, by the way, is that when two people come together and they have a purpose to fulfill, and they pray, and you know, God bless our work. When God sends money into that house, whether I sends it, He can choose who to send Whoever. it to. Whoever, yeah. okay. If he sends it through the man, it's our money. If he sends it through the woman, it's our, our money. money. We are one, okay. one family unit, you know. So if we have that at the back of our minds, whoever <laughs> is bringing in the money per time needs support, needs respect, needs love, needs appreciation. If you put all those things on the table, if a man will watch over the home, cover the blind spot of the woman, you know, support the woman, do things like, you know, school help you look run. through uh, school runs, help you look through your business books. Uh, you men know, have been thought that that's yeah. make you. Wait, are they sick. allowed to cook? Are they allowed to men, cook? Men will tell you that makes you sick. Everybody eats. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, anybody can cook. Also, do you cook? cook. Also, God, man, do you cook? I, I, I do, not quite often. Okay. I, I must say, because maybe my wife is watching now, she may say, <laughs> <laughs> let me give, I mean, the last time I cooked was December. Oh, uh, well, that's quite mean? recent. Uh, I, I, what did I mean? I think it was rice or something. <laughs> oh. And then we were quite away with the, with the kids, something. you know, um, uh, we were away for like four or five days. One of the days I told my daughters and my wife, I'm taking care of dish, dish, dishes, everything. I washed and the no, ladies, they, my girls make sure they pack the sink. Well, well. Yeah. Yeah. I did yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so you can feel like it. I, I, I did Let it. Let me take know, this so. call from yeah. Shola. Let me call this. Shola from Lekki, thanks for calling. Okay, morning. Morning. Hi, this is my first time. Welcome to the show. Okay, you've been doing a good job. Um, I, love, I love that topic. You know, as a couple, actually, I just got out from a divorce because. Um, of emotional support, physical support. <clears throat> so in terms of, um, I think everybody has their duty and you have to contribute. It shouldn't be weighed on one side because as a man, what you're supposed to give, apart from financial support, I'm not even being tuned to financial support that the men should do 100% because we have come of age now. I don't think a wife should just be a housewife. So in terms of financial support, I am regardless of financial support, what is very, very important is emotional, physical support from men. Hmm. Even if the woman can take 100%, no problem. But you must show the faith. Leadership is not about money. Hmm. It's about you really protecting your own, protecting your wife from, your, from his relatives, Protecting her from anything that will give her a headache, no matter even if she's providing. But as a woman, if you are providing, you don't have to show that you are providing. There should be a way of you really respecting your husband. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. I, I, you know, now that we're talking about uh, marriage and relationships, I would like you to help us understand because some of the problems that I see here and perceive in you know, spousal relationships is usually that of ego, where we have allowed society to dictate to us what a man should or should not do. Some people are already arguing in our comment session, should a man cook? Why must a man cook? We've assigned roles to the man and the woman, and sometimes when we see couples who are able to understand each other and swap those roles, it becomes a problem. And out of the shame of, I don't want people to think I am weak, I will not be able to do this when you really know that you're supposed to help 
in doing this to just balance out the thing. So what advice would you give to men who sit and feel, because I am a man, I was raised to be a man this way, no matter what happens, there are certain things I cannot do for you, find your way around it or die in the stress. Hmm. I think it's very important for uh, men and women alike to understand that every relationship is unique. Mm. Yeah. See, we get into trouble when we start to compare ourselves and pick up traditional roles. Tradition will not always work. It's just a guide. It may not work in my own relationship. Mm. You understand? Those roles are just traditional roles. A woman cook, a man drives. Uh, what a man can do, sometimes a woman can do better. And what a woman can do, a man can do better. The most important thing, uh, when, if you want to be principle-centered and not pander to tradition, is uh, who is available, mm. who is most skilled. Yes. Yeah. In, in, there are homes that, that I've seen where the woman is a better fund manager than the man. Yeah. It is wisdom for the man to say, look, even if I make 70% of the money of our household income, or 80% of it, my spouse is a better manager. manager. Yeah. Uh, there, there's uh, uh, um, the money language thing that we teach in, in relationship coaching. What's the money language of your spouse? Is he a spender, a safe, saver, you know, and all that? Some people just have this capacity to keep money, while some people, are, you know, spend trips. They, they, just, uh -huh. they want to do lao lao. And just, so we need to be able to say, who is the best mm. in, for, this area. in this situation? It's just like when you're on the football field. You can't say because uh, uh, so, uh, this person is the oldest person in the team. He should mm. be the keeper. Mm. No. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has their area of strength. If we cease uh, to, you know, pander to tradition, yeah. especially those traditional roles of this person should do this, that person should do that, and we say, we want to make progress in our home. We want to use the things that God has given us and maximize them, mm -hmm. get better efficiency from make them. Make it about strengths and weaknesses. Yes. Yeah. Let's, because we have to wrap up very soon, and, and I'd I like to come to you now as a pastor, within a huge church. You have thousands of followers. You have a lot of people who <laughs> depend on you for guidance and direction. How do you sustain that nucleus family or your family? How do you have time for family? Do you take your family out? Do you have your me times? And, and how, how are you able to separate? Because, you know, pastors, I've, I mean, I heard some stories, and pastors are finding it difficult, especially... When single women come to your office, pastor, oh my goodness. Or, you know, all women will come, they come and cry, and your wife wondering, what is she doing in pastor's office for many hours? So do you get those kind of issues, and how do you deal with them, where you're overwhelmed by members coming to need you physically, emotionally, and draining you, and then the family is there saying they don't, they don't see you? Uh, thank you very much for that, Mara. You see, the important thing that leaders generally need to understand is that uh, there's no Superman leader. Mm. Yeah. Whether you're a pastor or you're a president or you are, you know, a CEO, you are first of all a man or a woman, as the case may be, before you become a leader. And the human frailties and weaknesses will always be there. What makes a better person is that you are overcoming your weaknesses mm. and you're maximizing your strength. Mm. All right? You are, you are you are building, I mean, you are getting stronger in the areas where you are weak. That's where you're you're better. So but Primarily speaking, you are human, and you have your weaknesses, you know, and your strengths and all that. Now, every leader, including a pastor, must learn to practice vulnerability. So our church members uh, within and outside of the country in the places where we've planted churches, they know. Anytime I show up, I tell them, primarily, uh, I'm not superhuman. I enjoy the grace of God. <laughs> the power of God is available when I minister, but I'm a man. Hmm. And I'm free to tell stories about my relationship with my wife. My wife has gotten used to it right now. Something can happen at home yesterday. We had an argument, and I get on the pulpit the next day and say, uh, we even had an argument yesterday. So if you're arguing your home, don't beat yourself with a bat on the head. It happens. Uh, it happens. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is I don't allow it to go beyond this point. Even the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. not. Yeah. So anger is human emotion. Uh, it's just that you must not allow it to, uh, anger to get you to the point where you're cursing. Mm. or you're thinking evil. Mm. Uh, but it's okay to be hungry because you are still human. So if we practice vulnerability, people understand that we're not essentially super People human. don't want to see that vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I saw it here on your show once. When I kissed my wife, 
Yes. Last year. And you people Thank bought it. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> you can't remember that yourself. I was getting it. People don't want to see. Yeah, yeah, I just got... recognize <laughs> You know, exactly. so we just finished a leadership comp. I mean, a, 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 a conference in July last year or so, and then we got home. We just got back home from church, and I think uh, somebody was with us, maybe my sister-in-law or something. I was still saying, "Oh, it was a powerful says, I said, "Oh, thank God, thank God for my wife also." And then I held that close, and I, and I think my sister-in-law was recording, and I, kissed her. I kissed her, and it became you know? a topic. And uh, it because went some of us high. are like seeing pastors kissing on national wow. television. Wow! Yeah, but pastor is human. You. Yeah, thank and, you. And, uh, and then a married to, human. Yeah, yeah, until I see that the Joe kissing. But <laughs> well, you know, you know that Joe is in the older generation. Yeah, so yeah. some some things that. evolve over the generations. Mm -hmm. I mean, essentially, if they, you are not breaking any principle. Yeah. But you see, why would I allow that to even get out? Yeah, because I put it on my own Instagram handle. Okay. Is to help other people to see uh, that it's okay to be cordial. Mm, to be affectionate. To be affectionate. Mm. To your spouse. To your spouse. In public and, or and in don't, don't, don't play superhuman. Don't say, oh, I'm now, I'm a, you know, uh -huh, I'm a senator. Uh, so I be, I'm a pastor. I must be this rigid. No, your children, they know you as father before they know you as pastor. Mm. Yeah, and they don't want to relate with you a CEO or pastor mm. or this or that. They want to relate you with as you as daddy. daddy. So, All right. Before yeah. Mariah asked you uh, the personal question, I wanted you to help a friend, mm. you know? So she's in the marriage where I think the husband doesn't know how to take account, give account. Mm. They had a situation where he wanted something to happen, someone to stay the, the, with them, and she was like, I don't know this person. I'll be putting this person up with my kids, and, you know, mm. he insisted, and so she allowed a person to stay but then something happened what she was afraid of happened and it's happening from his side of the family where the woman is supposed to be shot don't say anything and they've said he dealt with it but has not he doesn't think it's okay to give account to his wife that okay i made this decision is wrong i put you and your and the kids exposed you to the in harm's way i am sorry he thinks because it's from my side of the family we mustn't talk about it. So I said to her, if it was your own side, or has it ever happened where you've had to talk to him from, if you had someone coming from your side on why they should stay or why, or why they can't stay? Have you ever done, you know, she said, ah, because I'm one, I have to even beg him, beg him. Why, how do you advise men mm -hmm. to handle a situation where things that they decided has failed mm -hmm. family? I think everyone needs to embrace the value of humility. Yeah, uh, and one of the traits of a good leader is humility. If you want to lead at home or to lead at work, you have to um, humble yourself when you need to and be quick to apologize. One of the traits of real humility is the ability to accept wrong. Mm. Yeah, because you see that I am not perfect and I'm not superhuman, a superhuman. So uh, you, are, you are quick to accept that. Uh, what's happening in this situation is a play of ego. The man is just being unnecessarily, unnecessarily been a man now. egocentric. See, those are the things that we have been taught wrongly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, that and it's, it's, it's bad leadership when we are taught, even in family, that a man being the head of the family, his word is law, you know. It, it's, it's, never uh, apologize. it's just cultural and tradition that we have to deal with. I was, um, I was on a, a, I think a TV show too, recently, where I was talking about my own side of the country. I'm a Yoruba man. My son name is Akinlabi. Um, when we see a traditional ruler, we call them Kabiesi, which means Kabiosi. In, in English, it means unquestionable. Can do no wrong. Yeah, can also do no the wrong. Crown, the crown is yeah. beyond any wrong in English. And, uh, so the, that's the way some people carry it also. So I'm the king of my home. Mm. I can do no wrong. So you must accept my wrong as a right <laughs> in mm. any case. Oh. But in the well, context of a married relationship, mm -hmm. you are trampling on the will and the emotion of the other person. <laughs> and it is wickedness. Oh. So you are a leader, you are not a king, so to speak, in that respect. Yeah. Mm. You are not the so traditional the king. Are saying, you are my lord, <laughs> you are not your lord. Uh, no, it's okay. It is eulogy. 
in my own opinion. You can give the praises. Yeah, you can. You can collect the can praises, collect the praises, but then be and human. Be but be, yeah. be I'm, human. I'm not talking about collecting. I'm talking of the one that tells you, I am the Lord mm -hmm. of this house. That's, yeah. that's not collecting praises. That's the person that's telling you. That's I see. Um, uh, that is taking uh, um, leadership too far. Because the ba there's ev to everything, there's a balance. The balance of good leadership mm. is humility. Yeah. yeah. So that you can be uh, leading with conscience. <sighs> you can be, you know, leading with character. Mm. <laughs> you understand? Because you can lead without character. Oh. Yeah. Humility is not a word we hear very often with leadership, especially in, in our climb. And, so and that's what is creating problem for us. Because what there are values the that we have to embrace. Like this situation now, the man should have accepted wrong that, oh, maybe that's a bad decision. Next time, I will listen yeah. better. Well, yeah. sure we have to wrap up, but thank you so thank much, you, Pastor. Sir. Mark, it's my pleasure. We <laughs> thank you very much. We have to bring you back soon. We'd like to meet your wife at some point. So <laughs> yeah. nice to have you guys together. I, 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 Since I you are the kissing couple, that. we'll see if we can. The kissing man of God. kissing man of God. All right, that's all we can take on today's show. Hope we learned a few things as we have. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.